hard, weak, flexible, tough. We use all kinds of different materials for various purposes. Most glass is either very brittle or strong. It is a good thing that your windscreen isn't as fragile as your grandma's crystal teapot. Two different kinds of materials, right? But they are both made of glass. But there is one glass object that is both extremely brittle and super tough. The Prince Rupert's Drop. These glass bubbles have fascinated material scientists for centuries. The head of the drop is said to be stronger than steel, but breaking the tail is enough to make the whole drop shatter explosively. Now how can we form a Prince Rupert's Drop with its outstanding properties? We start off with a simple tube of soda lime glass and heat it up using a propane torch. As soon as the glass reaches its transition temperature of about 550 degrees Celsius, a droplet starts to form. Catching the droplets in a beaker filled with room temperature water causes the outside of the droplet to cool off first while the core is still very hot. This, in turn, creates a very high tensile stress inside the droplet. But due to the huge thermal change on impact, the droplets have a survival rate of about 50%. Those that do not survive the formation explode inside the beaker. We can see the stresses in the drop when we hold it between two crossed polarizers. The stress in the drop will cause these color fringes to appear. The color of the light depends on the relative strength of the stresses in the material. We can use this to interpret the color pattern in the drop as a stress gradient. First off, notice that there is no stress in the solid outer layer. The tensile stress then grows as we move inwards. This is shown by the sequence of colors, which follows the colors in the visible spectrum in order of increasing wavelength, and therefore increasing stress. The stress increase slows to a maximum in the center as the colors change more slowly and eventually stop and reverse there. This residual stress in the drop should make a difference in how strong it is. As professional scientists, we got a hammer and went to test this. First, let's see how much force it takes to break a regular glass marble. Remarkably little. With a reasonably heavy hammer, gravity will do the trick. However, the Prince Rupert's drop is a different story. Even our strongest swings were not able to break the head of the drop. The only qualitative measurement that we got is that it's stronger than the average tray table. But if we manage to break the tail of the drop, the whole thing shatters. Let's try that again in the lab at 40,000 frames per second. As you can see, the whole drop fractures into many small fragments. Remember the residual stress in the drop, which results in strain energy. By breaking the tail, this residual stress is perturbed, the strain energy is released, and the result is this explosion. To estimate this strain energy and assuming that the drop is spherical with a 1 cm radius, we recall the formula volume times the stress squared over 2e, which for values measured at the laboratories results in 20 joules. Scientists are still trying to find out in how many pieces the drop shatters to have an impression about the impact of the explosion. Also, to get an idea about the speed of the fracture, we can assume that it's approximately the same as the speed of sound inside the glass, which is given by the square root of the bulk modulus over the density, and results in 4 km per second. This value is close to the fracture speed measured in laboratories, and explains why we can't see the fracture. It's finished in less than 2 frames of a 40,000 frames per second camera. So due to the rapid cooling while forming the drop, a large tensile stress is built up in the core. But the true mechanism is still a mystery. A better understanding of the breaking of a Prince Rupert's drop can provide helpful insights on the physics of fragmentation and has further applications, some of which less obvious than others. An object that due to its structure can have two totally opposite properties is very special. Companies like Unilever even provide funding for these kinds of experiments in order to improve the crumbling of their bouillon cubes. Maybe in the near future, this simple looking droplet with a highly complicated behavior will be in our everyday use. But for now, it's only a quite explosively hot topic in condensed matter physics research. <laughs>